Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to be solving 10 questions from algebra. Now algebra is a pretty vast topic and there are a lot of question types that are involved. But in this video, we are going to be focusing primarily on questions involving synthetic division, quadratic equations and some linear equations as well. Many of these questions are fairly easy, but some of the questions will require you to think a bit. So do try out these questions before you have a look at the solution. Also, we have programs if you are preparing for the CAT and need some boost for from our end as well. So if you like my teaching, do explore the uh, power prep programs if you are looking at something that will help you with the basics till the advanced concepts. And if you want to solve questions with me and attend the workshops that we are having as a part of mastery programs, do check out that program as well. Now on to the video and we will solve the questions together now. Let's start with this question. Now this is a fairly straightforward question if you look at it. What is the value of p if x plus 3 is a factor of 3x square plus px plus 6? Now if x plus 3 is a factor of this, it basically means that if I divide 3x square plus px plus uh, 6 by x plus 3, I should be able to get the remainder as 0. So how do we do that? There is one way of doing it using long division. So 3x square plus px plus 6, let's say you have this and you divide it by x plus 3. Now what is going to happen here? We will be able to say that first of all, I will need to multiply this by 3x so that I will be able to get 3x square here, but I will also get 3x into 3 that is 9x. So I'm going to get 3x square plus 9x here. Now because I'm subtracting these, these two will get cancelled out. I'm going to get p minus 9 times x. This is what we are going to get plus 6 is what will remain here. Now I have to eliminate x as well. So I will have p minus 9 here. What we can do in this particular context is we can multiply this by p minus 9. So this is what we can do. Now because of this I am going to get p minus 9 times x but because 3 will now be multiplied by this. What am I going to get? I am going to get 3p minus 3 nines are 27. So this is what is the extra term that I'm going to get. Now I know that if I subtract this, this will go away. If I subtract this, this will become minus, this will become plus. And if I just uh, shuffle the terms, I should be able to get the sum as zero because x plus 3 will divide 3x square plus px plus 6 entirely. That is the whole idea. So in this particular case, what is going to happen? We are going to get 6 minus 3p plus 27 equals 0 or we are going to get 3p equals 33 or the value of p will be equal to 11 in this particular case. So that is something that we will be able to do and we'll be able to get the answer. Now if you are doing the same question using synthetic division, you will have to draw it something like this. We will get the coefficient of x square that is 3, the coefficient of x that is p and the constant term that is 6. If x plus 3 is a factor then minus 3 will be present here. Now 3 will be written as it is here minus 3 multiplied by 3 is going to be minus 9 which is going to give me p minus 9 here minus 3 into p minus 9 is going to give me minus 3p plus 27 if i add these two terms i'm going to get 6 minus 3p plus 27 equals 0 which is exactly the term that we have written here and because of which i will again get the value of p as equal to 11 so the correct answer to this question is option c that is 11. Let's move on to the next question. Now we have to figure out the remainder when f of x that is x cube minus 6x square plus 2x minus 4 is divided by g of x that is 1 minus 3x. So again what you can do in this particular case is you can use synthetic division. Now because 1 minus 3x is present let's say 1 minus 3x is the uh, number that we have this is equal to 0 that means 3x will be equal to 1 or x equals 1 by 3 in a way. So what will that tell us is 1 by 3 will basically be the left side of the synthetic division expression. And because the coefficient of x cube is 1, the coefficient of x square is minus 6, the coefficient of x is 2 and the constant term is minus 4, we will write them as it is. Now I am going to get 1 here as it is because the first term is written the way it is. 1 by 3 into 1 is going to give me 1 by 3 here. Minus 6 plus 1 by 3 or 1 by 3 minus 6 will be 1 minus 18 divided by 3 or minus 17 divided by 3. 1 by 3 into minus 17 by 3 is going to give me minus 17 by 9. 2 minus 17 by 9 is going to be 18 minus 17 by 9 or 1 by 9. 1 by 3 into 1 by 9 is going to be 1 by 27. So 1 by 27 minus 4 is going to be 1 minus 108 divided by 27 or minus 107 by 27. So the correct answer here is option B that is minus 107 divided by 27. So if you know synthetic division, life becomes much easier here. Let's look at another question. Very similar question. 
remainder when f of x which is the cubic is divided by g of x wherein x minus 1 by 2 is what we have here now again applying the same logic that we saw earlier x minus 1 by 2 will mean that in the synthetic division form 1 by 2 will occupy the divisor bit and here we are supposed to write down all the coefficients so 4 minus 12 14 and minus 3 are the coefficients that we have so 4 we will write as it is half into 4 is going to be 2 minus 12 plus 2 is going to be minus 10 half into minus minus 10 is minus 5, 14 minus 5 is going to be 9, 9 into half is going to be 9 by 2 and 9 by 2 plus minus 3 is going to be 4.5 minus 3 that is going to be 1.5 or 3 by 2 it's the same thing. So the correct answer here is option C that is 3 by 2. Let's look at one more question. x plus y plus z equals 0. Then what is the value of x cube plus y cube plus z cubed? Now this is basically a question that uh, if you know the factorization of x cube plus y cube plus z cube, your life will become a lot easier. So in this particular case, we will be able to say that x cube plus y cube plus z cube is going to be equal to x plus y plus z multiplied by x square plus y square plus z square minus xy minus yz minus xz and you will have an additional term which is going to be equal to plus 3xyz. Now if x plus y plus z is equal to 0 then the first part of the right hand side becomes 0 which means that x cube plus y cube plus z cube will be equal to 3 times xyz. So the correct answer is option B. This is a very popular algebraic expansion that is there or the factorization bit that is present here. So make sure that you know this particular factorization properly so that you are able to answer these questions nicely and you are able to get free marks in these kind of questions. Let's look at the next question. If x minus y equals 8 then which of the following must be true? Both x and y are positive but it is not necessary. If you say that let's say x is equal to 0 then you can say that the value of y will be minus 8 or if you say that if y is equal to 0 the value of x can be 8 as well. So both x and y need not be positive. One of them can be 0 as well. So this must be true. Not really. So one is not my answer which basically means options A and C are not my answer because they have one that is present here. Two, if x is positive then y must be negative. Is that the case? What if x is equal to 1? If x is positive 1 minus y equals 8. Now what happens in this particular case? We are going to see that y will be equal to minus 7. So yes, if x is positive y must be negative is true. But what if x is 100? 100 minus y equals 8. The value of y will now be 92. So x and y can both be positive as well. So this is of course not my answer. So option B is also not our answer. By elimination, option D or 3 only has to be our answer. But let's see. If x is negative, then y must be negative. So if x is negative, then y must be negative. Why are we saying that? If y is, is written as x minus 8, let's say. So y, ha y, y I have taken to one side and x minus 8 is what I have written here. If x is negative, so a negative number minus a positive number is going to give me a negative number itself. So if x is negative, then y uh, has to be negative. That is something that has to be true. So of course, only statement number 3 should be true in this particular case. Let's look at the next one. There is this statement that has been given to us, which says that the equations ax plus by equals 1 and ax minus by equals 1 have a unique solution for which of the following combinations of a and b. So let's explore the options one at a time. If a equals 1 and b equals 0, then what do we get? If a equals 1 and b equals 0, we'll get x equals 1 for the first one because b equals 0, this part will become 0 and a into x, that is 1 into x, will become x itself. So x will be equal to 1. And in this case, if you are looking at it, x will be equal to or x minus by will be equal to uh, 1. Uh, but y is equal to 0. So x will again be equal to 1. But is it going to be a unique solution? x equals 1, right? Because in this case, if you are looking at x equals 1, y can be equal to 0. And I am going to get the same solution. What if y is equal to 500? I am still going to get the same solution because the coefficient is 0 in this case. So I will get a lot of solutions in terms of x comma y because the value of y doesn't matter at all in this particular expression because b is equal to 0. So this is not going to give me an, uh, uh, a unique solution. I will get solutions like 1 comma 0, 1 comma 500, 1 comma minus 1, 1 comma minus 257. It could be anything. So all these solutions are practically possible, which means that I cannot get a unique solution using option 1. 
option two also suffers from the same thing because we have made a, uh, a equal to zero whatever happens to the value of x it doesn't matter because it is going to be multiplied by zero and that is why this is again not my answer c again is a problem because if a equals zero and b equals zero we can have infinite values of x and infinite values of y that can make this true because the coefficients themselves are equal to zero plus if you look at one small inconvenience that is happening here a equals zero and b equals zero will mean zero equals one which will shatter the loss of algebra loss of numbers that exist and of course that is cannot happen because of one question so the last option that we have here a equals one and b equals one will give you two equations x plus y equals 1 and x minus y also equal to 1 which means that x plus y equals x minus y in this case of course x will get cancelled out y uh, sorry uh, x plus y equals uh, x minus y which will basically means 2y equals 0 or y equals 0 is what we are going to get now if y equals 0 then what will happen if y equals 0 then x will be equal to 1 and that's why we are going to get only one solution that is 1 comma 0 for this particular question so option d is the only combination of a and b that will give us a unique solution so a unique solution means means a unique set of x comma y that you're going to get if you're going to get multiple sets of x comma y that satisfy the equation then definitely that is not going to be a unique solution to this particular question let's look at this particular question very interesting question now we are going to apply synthetic division twice so the polynomials ax cube plus 3x square minus 13 uh, and 2x cube minus 5x plus a when they are divided by x plus 2 each the remainder is the same so let's see what the remainder is in the, in the first case and in the second case so we are dividing it by x plus 2 so by now you would have got it what is the divisor here minus 2 and I'm going to write the coefficients as they are so a 3 there is no coefficient for x here so we'll just write 0 here because it is 0 into x and minus 13 so I will just write a as it is minus 2 times a is what I will write I will get 3 minus 2a here because I'm just adding these two terms minus 2 into 3 minus 2a I'll just shuffle the terms and write so that it does not become uh, very bad to look at so minus 2 into 3 is minus 6 I'll write it here and minus 2 into minus 2a is 4a so I'm going to get 4a minus 6 here minus 2 into minus 6 will give me 12 and minus 2 into 4a is going to give me minus 8a so what is the remainder that I'm going to get here minus 3 plus 12 is going to be minus 1 minus 8a so this is basically the remainder that I'm going to get in the first case what about the remainder in the second case again I will have a minus 2 here and I'll write the coefficients again 2 but the coefficient of x square is 0 because there is no term that has x square here the coefficient of x is minus 5 and the constant term is a itself so 2 will be written as it is minus 2 into 2 is minus 4 0 minus 4 is 4 itself minus 2 into minus 4 is 8 minus 5 plus 8 is 3 minus 2 into 3 is minus 6 a plus minus 6 is a minus 6 so what are we going to get here we are going to get minus 1 minus 8 a equals a minus 6 this will come to the right hand side we will get 9 a and minus 6 will come here we are going to get a 5 here because 6 minus 1 is going to be 5 so the value of a is going to be 5 divided by 9 so the correct answer here is option a that is 5 by 9 Let's look at this question. Again, this is a very interesting question, slightly different from what we have been doing till now, but do have a look at it, try it out, and then have a look at the solution. Now, this is a fairly easy question if you know what you're doing. So x plus one by x, I want to convert this to a raised to six equation. So what will I do? I can either square it and then cube it, or I can cube it and then square it. So let's try to cube it first and then square it. So x plus one by x, the whole cube, is going to be the cube of the first term plus three, into square of the first term into the second term plus 3 into the first term into square of the second term plus cube of the second term so this is the expansion that you have now if you look at this one x will get cancelled out x will get cancelled out so I am going to get x cube plus 1 by x cube I'll just write these two terms together and what about these two terms I can write them as 3 common x plus 1 by x here but you will be able to see that x plus 1 by x the whole cube is going to be nothing but 3 cubed which is 27 and x plus 1 by x is again going to be replaced by 3 so this part will be 3 into 3 that is 9 so I am going to be able to say that x cube upon 1 plus x cube is 27 minus 9 that is 18 so now we have reached the midpoint of this particular question 
Now I have an x raised to three here. I need to find x raised to six. What will we do? We will square both sides. So x cubed plus one by x cubed, the whole square will be 18 square. That is 324. What is this? First term square, which is x raised to six plus two into first term into second term plus the square of the second term. This is going to be equal to 324. Now I can cancel these two out and I will be left with x cube plus one by x raised to six, which is what, oh sorry, x raised to six plus one by x raised to six, which is what has been asked in the question. This two will go to the right hand side and it will get subtracted from 324. And that's why the answer here will be 322. So the correct answer here is option D that is 322. Let's look at one more question. This is again a question based on linear equation. So try it out and then you can have a look at the solution. Now, five tables and eight chairs cost 7350. So five tables plus eight chairs will cost 7350. Also three tables and five chairs will cost 4475 here. So what is the price of one table? What is the value of T? So if T is the price of one table, 5T will be the price of five tables. If C is the price of one chair, 8C will be the price of eight chairs. So that is what we are going to get. From these two, we have to figure out what is going to be the value of T. And we can figure it out by simply eliminating C here. So what we'll do is we'll multiply this equation by five. So we are going to get 25T plus, plus eight fives are 40C. 5 into 7350, you can just do it normally. 5 into 0 is 0 itself. 5 fives are 25. 5 threes are 15 plus 2 is 17. 5 sevens are 35 plus 1 is 36, 750. This is going to be the case. And about this one, we can multiply this by 8 so that we are able to make this 40C again. So 8 into 3 is 2040. 8 into 5 is 40C. 8 multiplied by this will give us 8 fives are 40. 8 sevens are 56 plus 4 is 60. 8 fours are 32 plus 6 is 38. 8 fours are 32 plus 3 is 35. So 35,800 is what we are going to get. If I subtract 25t minus 24t is going to give me a t itself. 40 minus 40 is going to be 0. 36, 750 minus 35, 800 is going to give me 800. To next 750 is going to give me 950. So we'll be able to say that the value of t is going to be equal to 950 or option A. And that has to be the answer to this particular question. Let's look at this particular question. Find the numerical value of C if the expression xy minus 3x plus 5y plus C can be factorized. So one thing you can do is you can just plug in the options and see what works for you. The other way of doing this is we can just say that, okay, we have these two terms. So let's take x common from these two terms. I'm going to get x into y minus 3 because this is xy minus 3x. So if my second term could have also been such that I will be able to take, an y, uh, take a y minus 3 common, then I should have been able to get this. But this is 5y that we have. So I will have to multiply this by 5. So what is this particular expression? This is xy minus 3x plus 5y minus 15. Now this is a term that can be factorized. So instead of c, if there were minus 15, I would have been able to write this as x plus 5 into y minus 3. So the correct answer here is going to be c equals minus 15. That is option B for this particular question.